Today we're going to talk about how I reinforce my display case shelves to hold more weight as well as an updated talk about lighting. Let's jump on in. Hey everybody, BAM Collectibles here and one of the most common questions that I get asked in my tutorial videos and people just messaging me is how do you reinforce your display case shelves? My answer so far has been, honestly, I have no freaking idea because I've never had to do so. I've run with the 29 inch wide PAX display cases and because the width not being too long, it makes to where bowing and it's not something that really has happened even with some of these heavy statues behind me. So I decided to be able to tackle this issue by purchasing some 39 inch wide PAX display cases. Another follow up topic that I figured I tackle is lighting. So in my first video, I went over the kits that I use and I purchased a while ago and what worked for me. I tried to pull an alternative a link in the description that would help people out. Unfortunately, those sometimes can sell out or you lose buyers. So I found one recently that works perfectly with the 39 inch wide PAX display cases. And so I figure I'd go over that, share with you and give you a link for that. Hopefully this uh, company will be around for a while, but I guess LED light companies are fly by night. They don't really last, but at least you can know what to look for as far as the overall kit goes. Special thanks to you for continuing to tune into my videos on display case enhancement tutorials. If you enjoy these series and you haven't subscribed to the channel, I encourage you to do so. Hit that button below as well as the notification bell so you don't miss things as they release. I do have somewhat of a part four plan that I wasn't able to fit some ideas into this video or I wasn't able to order certain things to be able to come in on time to have that out there. So I will have another follow up in the future with some updates. If you have any questions, do not hesitate. Comment below. Let's talk about it. Let's work through it. If you're lacking some confidence in something, let's build you up so that we can make this happen. Without delay, let's jump on in. If you haven't already done so, please be sure to check out my part one video, which will include a step-by-step -step process for how to build a case and all the details that are involved in that. Gonna use my kindergarten ruler to take the stickers off, some black acrylic paint to fill in the shelf pin holes. Then we'll go ahead and get some of the parts installed on this unit so that we can get this case together. One of the processes that I'm looking to improve on is how to fill in those shelf pin holes with color. I'm looking at an alternative method rather than painting them. With the case built, we'll go ahead and set that aside and dive right into how we're going to be reinforcing these shelves. First and foremost, safety is paramount. It's very important that you have yourself a set of safety goggles for this process. Here is a close up of the tool that we'll be using for this job to reinforce the shelves. This is a twin track shelving rod. It's very common to see these in kind of a workshop or garage where you have one and another side by side where you put these brackets on it and then you mount a shelf to it. The exact ones that I'll be using here come from Home Depot. The ones that are at Lowe's aren't the exact measurements that work perfectly with the PAX shelving, but the ones from Home Depot are absolutely perfect for this job. This is a close up of the wood trim that I use to mount my LED brackets to for the display case. One thing I will mention is a Dremel tool can be used to do what we're accomplishing today, but it's kind of like cutting a steak with a butter knife. It's just not meant to be. Overall, if you're willing to invest a little bit of extra money, this next tool, an angle grinder, will get you better results overall and just cleaner cuts. This tool is much more powerful than a Dremel tool, so please take all necessary precautions before using it. If you're wondering why the grinder looks so beat up, it's because it's my neighbor's and he's had it forever. Let's lay out our metal rod. I use a 70 inch long one as seen in the links in the description. After finding the middle point, I'll gently hit it with the angle grinder, getting a nice clean cut in half. During the cutting process, I did wish I wore a pair of gloves, which I'm sure is highly recommended from professionals. After I make the cut, I'll go ahead and rub the rough piece against the side of the grinder to get a smoother feel to it. We'll go into details about that soon. You can see here that I did mark the middle point with some permanent marker just so I know exactly where I'm cutting.
After I make the cut, there are some loose pieces of metal that kind of hang around. So I'll get a closer look to here at how I grind off some of that and smooth the edges so that it's safe to handle later on. Whipping out the wood trim, I'll go ahead and talk about the measurements that I use on the 39 inch wide PAX display case. For the strip that will mount to the top of the case, I use a 37 and 3 quarters inch wide strip. For all the shelves below, I use a 36 inch wide piece. The reason the wood strips used for the shelves are shorter is when you attach the reinforcement bar to the shelf, you have to install the wood strip a little bit further back and then uh, it aligns right with where the shelf pins are, so you need that space for those. When using an angle grinder to cut the strips, it's so much easier. It truly is like cutting right through butter. Just like I did with the metal rod, I'll go ahead and give you a close up of what it looks like to grind out the sides and sand them down so they're nice and smooth. After all the cuts are made and after you've kind of sanded off as much as you can, unfortunately the metal bar still usually has some little pieces of metal flex that sit in there. I just grab a piece of sandpaper and rub it against it and make sure those are all gone because you do not want any of those to get into your skin. A pro tip that I've shared with people before is save your box from your PAX display case. It's fantastic for being able to lay out stuff like this and prep it to be able to spray paint. Here's the spray paint that I use. I prefer a matte or flat black color. As always, a link will be in the description below to see the exact paint that I'm using. With everything painted and dried, we'll go ahead and dive right into talking about my new LED lights that I'm using for the 39 inch wide PAX case. A company called C Frank popped up that are exactly like my light kits used in my part one video that I bought many, many years ago. Before you do place your order, be sure to identify what your personal preference is. I enjoy cool white while others do enjoy warm white. So identify which one works for you and you can place your order accordingly with the link in the description. These are 16 inches wide, so I use two strips per shelf. When I build a case that has three different shelves, that would require me to have two of these because that's eight strips total needed. Another tip for you is that I used to build Zoids kits similar to Gundam kits and have this clear matte coat spray paint laying around. If you want to diffuse the lights some and make them less harsh, you can spray paint this on your strips, which I think help cast the best light on whatever it is you're trying to display. You can see how it looks when we spray this on here. Again, this is not really a requirement, more a personal preference that I have. Adding this thin filter on there does help in achieving a better lighting that fits my style. It was really cool to find these shelving rods because they fit exactly right on the front of all shelves for the PAX units. There are holes on the front of the rails that you can use to kind of screw them into the shelves if you want. I personally think that once you just slide them on there and add a little bit of weight to them, they will eventually kind of just form fit onto the shelf. So it's really not necessary. I'm not going to be adding any screws into mine to secure them into place. It's so snug that it does take a little bit of effort to get them on, but once on, it's just perfection. With the reinforcement bars on there, we'll go ahead and install the wood strips so that we could plan to mount our LED lights on. With the strip connected, I'll take the C-clamp brackets that are included with the LED lights, and we're gonna get those positioned on.
I used three of the C-clamp brackets per shelf. You can see how it looks here. Depending upon how heavy the statue is that you're going to have on the shelf, we can stick a reinforcement bar on the back of it as well. Here are those screw holes that I mentioned before. Again, I don't really feel it's necessary to. It's not like these things are going to slide off uh, from especially the back because it's resting upon the back of the display case. After making a few of those shelves, I'll show you what it looks like as we assemble everything. If these tutorials have helped you, you're a collector who loves taking the way you display your collectibles to the next level, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel as this will not be my last tutorial. I'm always trying to learn, grow, and push my own limits. When I do, I want to share it with everyone in this awesome collector's community. Thanks for your patience and getting these videos done. They're very difficult to record, but always worth the effort for you. As always, everybody, do what you love and love what you do. Bam out.